probably, and I can't remember, Than and Megan, was it five or six years ago that we had lunch at Burger 21? And there was this couple who said, you know, I want to have lunch with you guys and so we can share our vision. And here's Megan with this smile that is contagious. And she's going to win, win the world for Christ. I mean, there's nothing going to stop her. Than, big eyes, huge. You know, as they're sharing, she's saying, let me tell you something. God has called us and we're going to go. And at that point, they didn't know how. There was very little. They were living off of you know, nothing, <laughs> you know, they were every day just trusting in God. And, and to sit across them as Mike and I are sitting in that different season in our life where our kids are grown and, and gone and we're, you know, financial, we're stable and we have jobs and everything. And here they are sitting in front of us saying, we don't have anything, but God has called us. Well, like I said, Than's eyes were huge. They were bolding. <laughs> he looked scared. I just have to be honest. You know, he was like, I don't know. And Megan's going, we are going. God is good. He has called us. I don't know how it's going to happen, but we're going to go. And to look back at that lunch and to see their life and what God has done with Hope Project, it is, I just get chills. God is faithful and he is good. He has provided for them. He has provided for every trip, for building homes, and for people to come to know the name of Jesus Christ, and to know them, not just the name, but as their Lord and Savior. And that is amazing. There's a lot of lives you guys are touching. So uh, I'm going to invite Than up here. He's going to share with you. There's a trip that's going to be taking place to Guatemala, and they're going to build two homes and do a BVS. And these BVSs are like hundreds of kids. You know, we get excited as we grew each year. They, they just, the whole community shows up from what I hear. So to me, that is so exciting. So, you know, welcome Than as he's going to share a little bit with us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, listen, I got to tell you why my eyes were so big, okay? Uh, we just sang a song about courage, and Megan was full of courage there, and I was full of courage with my big eyes. But I have to tell you this. When we started Hope Project five years ago, we tried to do it the least courageous way possible, okay? We sat down on our porch in April of 2013, and we dreamed up this organization, but here was our plan. We said, we'll keep doing what we're doing. We had a job and a salary and insurance and retirement. We'll keep doing that, and we'll do Hope Project on the side, and maybe two years from now, we'll have to make a decision. You know, we pictured ourselves walking into our, our boss's office and saying, you know, we've been doing this for two years and it's come to the point where we think we could do it full time. Well, that was our plan. And that was April. And about a month later, I found myself at Starbucks sitting across from my boss saying, I think it'd be great if we didn't work for you anymore. And I stepped out of that. And I called my friend, and I went and I got on a truck, and I started cutting grass for $12 an hour. And that's where I was. And I want to tell you guys, the last five years have been incredible. It's been one of the greatest seasons of our lives. But at the same time, it's been one of the most difficult seasons of our lives. And I want to tell you about probably the most difficult season of our lives. It's the first three years of Hope Project. 2014, 15, and 16 were tough. And if I had more time, I would give you an exhausted list of why those years were tough and why that season was tough. But I'm going to get straight to the one we all understand, money, finances. In those three years, this is true, 100%, there were five times in those three years where my wife and I had less than $2 in our bank account, okay? And I'm not trying to make you sad. I'm not pumping you up for the offering here, but this is just the truth, okay? Less than $2. And this is, I'll be honest about how we bank. We have Wells Fargo. We have a personal account. And then we have a way to save account. You guys know what the way to save account is? Yeah, you swipe your debit card and a dollar goes into savings. The ticket, though, is being able to swipe your debit card. You have to be able to do that part, okay? But five times we would have less than $2 between those two accounts. And we'd think, should I slide that dollar over? Okay. Or maybe that 70 cents, should we leave it there as an emergency fund? 70 cents in way to save and a whole dollar in our checking account. And that's where we live during the season. And if you can imagine, there were some stressful times some hard conversations at the house. And I remember two conversations. I'll never forget them. One of them was sitting on the end of our bed crying, saying, did we do the right thing? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Did, did God really call us to this? Is it too late to go back to Starbucks and say, maybe we should keep this job for two years, right? We sat there and cried and said, is this really what God has called us to do? The other conversation was tough. This is a real conversation we had. We decided that if we could pay our mortgage and our light bill every month, 
the state of Florida could not take our child. That was it. If we can just pay the mortgage and keep the electricity on, DCF cannot have our son, okay? And everything else can wait. Now, I don't know the Southern Baptist stance on personal finances, okay? So I'm not speaking for Heartland, but that was our stance. Everything else will just have to wait because we believe we're doing what God has called us to do. And it was a hard three years to live in that state, to live in those seasons, to have those conversations. And there were three things that kept us going those three years, okay? The first one was knowing that we were called to it, knowing that this is what God had for us in the difficult season. And we knew that if we did not grow tired of doing what was good, that in due time, we would reap a harvest of blessing if we did not quit. We knew that to be true because we read it in the Bible. The second thing is this. We knew it was just a season. Okay, everyone say just a season. Just a season. It was just a season. It had to be just a season. And the third thing was this, is because over and over in doing a whole project and traveling and building homes and doing VBS, we got to see firsthand, God got to use us and our organization to help families out of difficult seasons, to see single moms go from the hardest time of their life to a new, fresh start. We got to see it over and over and over again. And I actually have a picture of a lady we're going to show tonight. This lady, we built her a home in August of 2016. And we got to see her step out of a difficult season in the middle of our hardest. Her story is incredible. This mom, uh, when we build a home for family around the world, we do one thing. We make sure they own the land so that no one can ever come and take that home from them. They own that land. This mom had to buy a piece of land to get a home, okay? And the, the land cost $1,000, okay? How many of you guys, if you had to raise $1,000 today, you could do it? Or you could just go to your way to save account and slide it over, right? You could do that. But this, this lady, this is what she did. She started making tortillas, okay? She would make tortillas every morning. She would go around her neighborhood and sell them, and then she would come home and see what she raised that day. Now, a tortilla, 30 of them equals $1. And that's what she had to do every day to raise this $1,000, making tortillas, making tortillas, making tortillas. Well, in this season of life, she started getting sick, and she had some pain, and she actually had to go get on a bus and get to the hospital just to find out her appendix was about to burst. So this mom in the hospital had surgery. She comes out of surgery, she's still in pain. She's laying in her bed to find out back at home, her daughter is sick and she needs to get there quick. So she gets out of the hospital bed and she gets back on a bus and she gets back home to where the tortillas are being made to find out her daughter has died. Yes, this is a tough season, okay? So the only thing she knows how to do is what? make tortillas. So she starts making more tortillas. And she can make them and give them to another child, because she still has three, and that child would cook them and then take them and sell them. You know, this lady spent three years making these tortillas to raise that $1,000. 30,000 tortillas she made to raise that $1,000. And right about that time is when a Hope Project team came from America to Nicaragua to build her her home. And in this picture, does that look like a woman in a really hard season? Does that look like a woman who just lost a child or just had surgery or just made 30,000 tortillas? No, she's full of life and she's smiling because that day when her home was dedicated, not only that, but she knew her daughter had been going to the church a lot and she said, you know, my daughter has something that I know I don't have and if you can help me, I'd like to receive whatever it has, she has today. And in that moment, she received Christ in front of her brand new home. That was the season she was now stepping into. And so the whole project has been amazing. It's been exciting. It's been hard. But in every difficult season that we're in, we get to look at someone else coming out of their difficult season and rising to new life. And guess what? We get to do it again. This summer, July, a team from Heartland is going to Guatemala. And guess what? There's a mom in Guatemala right now in a tough season that's about to get a new home. And when we stand in front of that home at the end of the day, if she wants to accept Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, she can do that too. And we're going to build homes, and we're going to do VBS, and we're going to do all that stuff, and you get to be a part of it. You can be a part of ending a difficult season. And our season is over, okay? We came out of that. So at the offering tonight, don't think about my $2 in the bank, okay? We, are, we have dozens of dollars in the bank right now, okay? Don't even worry about that. But when you get a chance to give tonight, think about the families. Think about the kids that whatever season their family's in, for a moment they're going to step into a church building and they're going to look at the stage and they're going to hear the word of God and they're going to see a puppet skid and they're going to sing a song and they're going to learn about how great God is. And while that's going on, we'll be building a home. And so Mike's going to come right now. He's going to pray over the offering. And I just want you to begin to think about maybe a hard season in your life 
And if someone could have come and helped you through that. Man, I am honored to be on stage with a guy like this and his family and their sacrifice. Don't you appreciate people like this it's taking step of faith? How easy it is to get involved with our own season, right? How easy it is to just be focused, look in the mirror and just say, well, I've got my needs and I've got my things that are going on. And then you hear a story like that. I'm, I'm honored that our church is being a part of partnering with you in going this summer. And as Stan mentioned, we're going to be taking up an offering tonight. I hope you've come prepared to give. If not, um, I'm sure that you can uh, come find out a way to, to, to continue to give. You could even become a monthly supporter of Hope Project International. I know my wife and I have done that, and we're just honored to be a part of that. But we're going to be receiving an offering tonight, and it's to help offset some of the costs for building homes, walking into somebody's season and changing their life, and then helping to support this VBS um, that's, that's going to be done. It's exciting, isn't it? Are you glad to be a partner tonight with what's going on? Will you pray for them? Let's pray tonight. Lord, thank you for this team. Thank you for just the leadership here with Than and Megan and their family. Lord, they've taken huge steps of faith to listen to you in the small moments of just the start of Hope Project. And look what you've done, God. Look what you've done out of just simple obedience. And Lord, we struggle at times to follow you, to give up things that we think are ours when you really own it all. And um, God, I pray that even in this moment, God, you would challenge us to be a partner in what you're doing, Lord. We're going to change somebody's season, Lord. We're going to make a difference in the lives of someone in Guatemala, families, children. Lord, you're going to be able to go in and, and through the, the work that's done with this team, with volunteers, there's going to be good news shared and that's what changes lives. These houses, that's just a temporary thing. Lord, the fun and games at a VBS, that's a temporary thing. But it's the gospel that changes lives. And you are going to be shared throughout the country of Guatemala. And I thank you for this team. So God, bless this offering. Use it for your glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Give it up for Than and his group and his team again.